Easter on April Fool's Day. There is an unwritten rule to conclude all April Fool's pranks by noon. Maybe because we wise up by midday and it doesn't pay to try anymore. Maybe because we're just tired of the tomfoolery. The resurrection of Jesus must have seemed more than a morning prank to the devil and his minions, and it certainly wasn't going to end at noon. The evil one had worked hard to disfigure God's creation and his plan to recreate the world called redemption. One could even point to King Herod and his murderous goal of the infant child at Bethlehem. But clearly, Satan had induced Judas Iscariot from the inner circle of Jesus to betray him. Satan had taken advantage of the stodgy and jealous religious leaders to plot Christ's death, and he had manipulated Pontius Pilate's fears of a Passover riot, which would have received disapproval from his boss, the Roman Emperor, and he unjustly and knowingly condemned an innocent man. Satan's goal seemed to be accomplished as the apostles all fled in fear and went behind locked doors. And only a few people attended Jesus' funeral and his burial. However, Satan's efforts to derail God's plan of love began long ago. Satan had successfully t tempted Adam and Eve to disobey God. Therefore, sin and death entered the world. This means Satan has two weapons with which to destroy us, death and death. Spiritual death, that is sin, and physical death. And Jesus addresses both. On Good Friday, Christ offered himself as the perfect, stainless offering in reparation for our sins. Therefore, spiritual death lost its eternal grip. An amazing fact gets lost, I think, in this story. In the face of the greatest injustice the world has ever seen, deicide, killing God, Jesus forgave. Jesus refused to retaliate or condemn or to save himself. If he had done so, he would not have conquered sin because he would have rejected his Father's will. And one sin from Christ would have spoiled the stainless offering. So we rejoice because spiritual death has been conquered. But the second weapon, physical death, claimed Christ. One weapon was broken on Good Friday, but did the other one prevail? Think of this, God died in his human nature. The earth trembled, the earth quaked, darkness covered the land, and then there was silence the silence of Holy Saturday. The Apostles' Creed describes Holy Saturday this way, He descended into hell. Now the Hebrew and the Greek language have better words to describe this reality than our word, hell. In Hebrew, Sheol. In Greek, Hades. This word refers to the abode of the dead. What must it have been like to see Christ, the life of the world, descend into the abode of the dead where Satan's second weapon holds the souls of all the just? On Saturday, Holy Saturday, in the Liturgy of the Hours, the last hour of evening prayer, which is prayed before the Easter Vigil begins, it opens with an antiphon as if Christ is speaking this. Death, you shall die in me. Hell, 
You shall be destroyed by me. Sheol, Hades, hell, trembles because Christ, who is life, not death, has entered the abode of the dead in search of our first parents as for a lost sheep. He meets the first man and woman he had created and redeems them and all the just who have been awaiting the Christ. And get this, they are not simply restored to Eden. No, that isn't enough. They are brought to heaven. Easter is the greatest celebration in the Church. It even surpasses Christmas in joy. Today we rejoice because death and death have lost the strength of their power. Spiritual death and physical death are conquered because Christ is the sinless offering who has risen from the grave.